Hello, my name is Melissa Blake and I'm studying my first year of business management with marketing at Leeds Beckett University. Today I'm going to discuss the marketing of Marks and Spencers. Let me begin by defining marketing. Marketing is the management process of anticipating, identifying and satisfying customer requirements profitably. It is also important to highlight when satisfying a customer's wants, you must anticipate what they're going to want in the future. It has been stated by an executive at 3M, our goal is to lead customers where they want to go before they know where they want to go. Summarised, marketing is all about understanding your customers, therefore finding out what your customers desire, not just in the present, and then satisfying those needs is critical. Hill and O'Sullivan define marketing orientation as an approach to business that places customers' needs at the heart of an organisation. They then go on to explain the term internal marketing. Internal marketing suggests that all employees should treat each other as if they are each other's customers. This highlights the fact that everybody within an organisation is responsible for marketing. Marketing is not just a functional area but a philosophy of business. Marks & Spencers is one of the leading retailers of food in the UK. The company recorded revenues of £10,555.4 million in the financial year ending April 2016. It has been stated, a business that increases its market orientation will improve its market performance. After the appointment of Grey London as Marks & Spencers' new advertising agency, the executive director of marketing specified Putting our customers at the heart of everything we do is central to every decision we make as a business. This, this provides evidence that m and are actively trying to embrace the marketing concept in order to gain increased sales, therefore growing their market share and profitability. As a result, this should lead to satisfied customers, which will not only escalate the number of your existing customers, but also attract new customers due to an enhanced reputation. This is supported by a report stating Marks & Spencer's market share of the food sector has increased by 4.3% from 2015-2016. Marks & Spencer's sales have also grown steadily from 2011 to 2015. In October 2015, Marks & Spencer's launched their Sparks card. As quoted by m and the result is a members club that helps m and know its best customers even better. As a result of customers scanning their Sparks card, Marks & Spencers are given the insightful and precious information into their customers' spending habits, like what products are often associated together. m and can therefore tailor their stores and stock to place those associated items together, to remind the customer to buy the associated item on an impulse. People in Britain spend more than £1 billion a year on impulse buys. Therefore, m and will use this to their advantage, which will help to increase profits. In summary, Marks & Spencers have shown us attributes of the traditional orientation of marketing. We sell what our customers want through the use of their Sparks card. I am now going to talk about the macro and micro environment. The macro environment is described as external factors beyond the control of an organisation. For example, political, economical, socio-cultural and technological factors. The microenvironment is internal factors that are specific to particular industries or organisations. There can be control to a certain degree over the microenvironment. Marks & Spencers has had to change in order to adapt to certain changes in the macroenvironment, for example socio-cultural changes. There has been a trend for the nation to become more health conscious. As a result, Marks & Spencers launched a Count On Us range in 2000 with meals containing less fat and reduced calories. The Count on Us range has had sales of over 16 million from April 2010 to 2011. Subsequently, they have also released a fuller for longer and a balanced view range endorsed by the British Nutrition Foundation to accommodate and take advantage of the shift towards a more health conscious society. Another change that Marks & Spencers has had to accommodate is the rising trend for convenience food shopping. In response, Marks & Spencers has introduced a click and collect service. Not only does this make shopping an easier experience for customers, but also gives customers another reason to visit its branches and perhaps buy while they are there. Within the micro environment, it is important to conduct stakeholder analysis. 
Stakeholder analysis looks at the different stakeholders that affect the microenvironment of the business. One stakeholder that Marks & Spencer's focuses on is their suppliers. Marks & Spencer's plays an important role in the clothing industry in Bangladesh. They source clothing from around 60 factories there. They believe that it's crucial to ensure that the standards they expect from their suppliers are maintained. As quoted by m &S, we were one of the first companies to sign the Bangladesh Accord in 2013. Marks & Spencer's food department also focuses on their suppliers as, and where the food is coming from. Quoted by Marks & Spencer's website, over 90% of all the wild fish we sell comes from the most sustainable sources available to us. In 2007, Marks & Spencer's set the aim to become carbon neutral, which they have now achieved. They have subsequently set new aims of combating climate change, reducing waste, trading ethically and helping customers lead healthier lifestyles. This provides evidence that m and have conducted microanalysis and look in depth into their stakeholders' opinions. On the other hand, Marks & Spencer's has recently been in the news regarding a panorama investigation of factories in Turkey, which exposed that children have been working on clothes. Panorama found seven Syrians working on one of the British retailer's main factories. The refugees often earned little more than a pound an hour, well below the Turkish minimum wage. They were employed through a middleman who paid them cash in hand on the street. This shows that Marks & Spencer's have lost control within the supply chain and therefore may not be considering their stakeholders' views by making unethical decisions. Marks & Spencer's could also improve within their clothing department as it only has 3.6% market share with declining sales of 2.3% in the last financial year. In order to combat this, m and has recently announced that it will be launching a new clothing campaign to mirror its successful food adverts, highlighting the design and quality of its clothes. This will hopefully boost sales and increase market share, however in order to be successful m and needs to understand its customers. The image taken from Mintel shows the proportion of different age groups shopping in the food and clothing section. As you can see, 59% of their customer base for clothing is over the age of 45, therefore this is where their focus needs to be. In conclusion, I think Marks & Spencer's is a very market oriented company, as it does look at its customers' wants and tries to adapt. m and also consider their macro and micro environment when making decisions, However, some problems have aroused due to loss of control. This is a list of the references I used and thank you for listening.